On November 4th, 2016, magic graced our screens when the first Doctor Strange came out. Yeah, pun intended. Come on. On a budget of $236 million, that's a massive budget. Wow. Doctor Strange actually crushed it at the box office, though, with a $677 million box office run. That's awesome. That's legit awesome. This movie is led by Benedict Cumberbatch, who at the time was more known for Sherlock Holmes. I love Sherlock, by the way. It's a BBC show, and it's so good. One thing that stands out for me just looking at the um, crew list was that the music was composed by Michael Giancino, who's just legit. Like he, He's amazing. A lot of people don't know this, but he actually composed the music for Lost, which is as you all know, my favorite show of all time. He also directed Werewolf by Night, which I think was his directorial debut. I'm not 100% sure. If You can let me know in the comments if it is or not. That'd be good to know. But I believe that's when he made his debut as a director. Werewolf by Night is one of the best Marvel things in the last little while. It was awesome. What was really cool about Doctor Strange was it brought forth a magical corner of the MCU. Yeah, we had little teasers with Wanda and Loki, the Thor movies, you know, but we never had like a fully fledged introduction to this part of the Marvel universe. So in doing that, Marvel was able to make this movie like visually very different than anything we've seen before. The Mirror Dimension was crazy, so awesome. When he was like moving reality and and buildings were coming and going it felt like inception honestly it was so cool nothing like that was ever done in the uh, mcu up until that point it was very unique very special to this film so it it really made it pop and and it it made it stand out benedict cumberbatch as dr strange is so good the guy's just, just an excellent actor up until now you've Heard me like he praise on Tom Hiddleston as the best dramatic actor in the MCU. But Benedict Cumberbatch definitely can, you know, go toe to toe with him. Rachel McAdams plays his love interest. She's so good in this film and she's just a great actress altogether. Mad Mickelson is the villain. He played actually, he replaced Johnny Depp in the Fantastic Beasts movies as the main villain. He's such a good villain. I kind of wish we got to see more of him and he wasn't just one off in this film. Who knows, though? He might come back. You never know. This is also the first time we see Wong, who has now become this kind of connecting thread through different films and where we currently are in the MCU. And this is where we first saw him. If you ask me, what I enjoyed the most about Doctor Strange was just the magic, just the visuals the the fight scenes all that it was just so well done i i usually i usually love when movie when these kind of marvel movies have some heart and you know you feel connected to the story on a on a deep level i wouldn't say that's really prevalent in doctor strange like there's not a it's not like captain america one when he's got to put it in the water and say goodbye to peggy like oh that tears at your heartstrings this film didn't necessarily have that but i don't think it was really meant to and i don't think i even really want them all to be like that i I like how each how this film stands out you know i love how marvel took a risk and did something unique and different it's it really was like watching an inception type of movie on a in a cbm format it it was so good it did feel like dr strange picked up the magic a little too quickly i don't think that's enough for me to really say i didn't like it this was one of the top top movies i've seen so far and it's something I wish Marvel did more of is, is take these risks. I wish each hero had their own style of film that felt unique to that world. And what I mean by that is you have Black Panther, which is going to come up in this phase two. That movie introduced the world and, and the, the movie itself had a style so unique to that character. Shang-Chi did the same thing. And Doctor Strange was kind of the first of these movies to really like stand out and have its own like style to it you know what i mean although shang chi and black panther if you ask me took it to another level in a positive way because they also introduced a whole culture that felt really special and unique to those characters this was more like a style of movie so it's like this was the first time marvel kind of dipped their toe into doing something really unique 
and they took it to another level with these other films that I just talked about. And obviously, I love that. It's incredible. It's so cool when they do stuff like that. It makes them feel special. I, I just wish they did more of it. That's the one thing they didn't do enough of in current MCU films is really try to like make the film stand out. Oh, and I forgot to mention Tilda Swinton just absolutely killed it as the super cool bald one, <laughs> the ancient one. She's so good. She comes back in Endgame. Excellent character, excellent actor. When you think about it, you had two... I never really connected the dots, but Mad, Mads Mikkelsen and Benedict Cumberbatch are two excellent dramatic actors that I think perfectly complemented each other in this film. It's really cool how Marvel's able to get those type of actors and they put them in these positions to succeed. Just great work. I could spend an hour heaping praise on this movie, talking about how sick the magic was, how dope the characters were acted how awesome the stakes were, how sick of a uh, big, big, bad Dormammu was. With all this praise I've been heaping on this film, where does it rank in our MCU power rankings? Well, I gotta tell you, it's close to the top five, but it's just inching outside. Doctor Strange comes in at number six in our MCU power rankings. So to recap, I'm going to go through it. So from 14, uh, you know what? I'll just do the whole thing. Iron Man 3 came in at 14. Dark World, 13. Iron Man 2, number 12. Number 11 is Ant-Man. Number 10 is Thor. Now we're in our top 10. Number 9 is The Hulk. Number 8 is Iron Man. Number 7 is Age of Ultron. Number 6 is where we are with Doctor Strange. And then now this is our top 5, unchanged from last week. Captain America, number five. Number four is Guardians of the Galaxy, volume one. Number three is Avengers, the first one. Number two is Winter Soldier. And number one is Civil War. Those are our MCU power rankings. Power wankings? Oh, no. Power rankings. Oh, what a horrible mispronunciation. Oh, gross. (laughs) Next week, we're going to be talking. Oh, my God. Next week, we'll be going over Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume Dose. I am Mark Savvy of Savvy Geeks, signing off. <laughs> I think I said that.